Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Fahad Mirza and I'm so glad to see AMD waking up at last and releasing few things which really matter. This time they have come up with a fully open source 1 billion model called as AMD Olmo. In this video, not only we are going to install it locally, but I'm also going to give you a full rundown of this model, plus how can you also train it on your own data set. So let's get right into it. AMD Olmo are a series of 1 billion language models trained from scratch by AMD on AMD Instinct MI250 GPUs. The training code is used has been taken from the Olmo project and if you don't know what Olmo is, I already have covered Olmo in great detail on my channel. Olmo stands for Open Language Model and the idea behind Olmo is to give full access to Open Language Model for research community and also Olmo is quite a powerful truly Open Language Model alongside Open Training Data open evaluation code and open model checkpoints with the logs. Now, it is really good to see that this Apache 2 licensed AMD Olmo 1 billion models are open to the public and there are no restrictions, which is really very good for the community and for the AI. There are three models which have been released by AMD in this family, in AMD Olmo I mean. The first one is a pre-trained model which is AMD Olmo 1 billion. The second one is AMD Olmo 1 billion SFT or supervised fine tuning. There have been two phases in it. Let me actually show you the pipeline. So you see the first one, the state one is a pre-trained one, the base model which has been trained on this Dolma 1.7 data set. Dolma is a data set of 3 trillion tokens from a diverse mix of web content, academic publications, code books and encyclopedic materials. So that is what Dolma is, very very good high quality data set. So that they have done in this pre-training. Secondly, they have done this supervised fine tuning. In the phase one, they use this Tulo v2 data set and in the second one, these are quite well known data sets open herms and code feedback and in this sft phase they prepared the model for chat capabilities and in the third and final one they use this direct preference optimization where they align the model with human preferences so what they did was they used this ultra feedback data set and they gave it the preferred and the rejected answers from the data set so that's how the model is very nicely and tightly aligned with human preferences which is quite nice so they first fine-tuned this model in stage 2 on sft and then they further fine-tuned it with direct preference optimization and this has helped this model to align better and produce outputs that are consistent with human values and preferences they also have shared some of the benchmarking information i'm not a huge fan of benchmarks because i believe in testing it by ourselves and that is what we are going to do but we if you're interested in it please check out uh, the model card and i will drop the link to it in video description they have shared a lot of benchmarking information there so let's go and try to get this thing installed before i do that let me introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are agent ql Agent QL is a query language that turns any web page into a data source. It works on any page, it is resilient, it is reusable, and it structures the output according to the shape of your query. And I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Okay, so let me take you to my terminal where I'm running Ubuntu 22.04 and I have one GPU card of 48 GPU of VRAM. Now, let me first create a virtual environment and then we are going to install all the prerequisites which are needed for this. You can also run this in the Docker with by using the Rockham uh, libraries from the Docker Hub and they have given those instructions in the model card. But I'm just going to go with the transformers here. So let's wait for all of these prerequisites to get installed, which of course in include PyTorch and Transformers. 
And that is all done. Let's launch our Jupyter Notebook. Now let's import the libraries and download this Olmo model. And the model size is quite decent, just under 5 gig. So let's wait for it to get downloaded. I'm also going to show you my GPU consumption when it is loaded onto my GPU. My VM and GPU is sponsored by Mass Compute. If you're looking to rent a GPU on good prices, I will drop the link to their website in video's description. And I'm also going to drop a coupon code of 50% discount, which you can use on range of GPUs from their website. Okay, so let's see how long does this take. And the model is downloaded here. Now let's see what AMD has done with this. Let's test it out. I'm just going to give it a simple prompt here. What is love? And then we are putting in some of the tokens like beginning of sentence and then we are defining the prompt template. We are then converting our text prompt into tokens with the help of tokenizer. Model is generating the output through those tokens and some of the hyperparameters which control the output. And then we are decoding the output back through tokenizer and displaying it. And there you go. So look at the response. It is saying that love is a complex and multifaceted emotion that can be experienced in various ways by different individuals. Some common elements of love include passion, desire, affection, and all that stuff. So looks quite good, not bad at all. So very coherent. Let's try some of the role play. Now, let me format it properly. So in this prompt, what I'm trying to do, I have provided it a very graphic horror uh, sort of novel plot. And I am asking it to just tell me what happened to the other people in this story in the next few chapters of this novel. So this is related to a war where, you know, I'm just giving it this character, the Chanas, which died today. And then it is just going into the future and telling what happened. So oh, there you go. So you see, it is talking about it. The day after the battle, I found myself drifting through a hazy, surreal landscape. I looked around feeling alone and exhausted. How good is that? The memories of the horrors we endured still clung to me like a dark cloud. As I walked, I stumbled upon an abandoned grocery store. So uh, look, I have tested like thousands of models and I think this is one of the really good ones when it comes to story writing because the thing about story is that when you start reading it and if it just mesmerizes you you want to read it through and through through so that is what is happening at the moment I can read it without getting bored but of course I'm not going to read all of this text but looks really coherent very nicely written very masterful strokes of creativity, I would say. So I think language is really amazing for this model. Let's try out a bit of reasoning questions. Now in this one, I'm saying that John and Mark in a room with a ball and a basket and a box. John puts the ball in the box, then leaves for work. While John is away, Mark puts the ball in the basket and then leaves for school. They both come back together later in the day and that they do not know what happened in the room after each of them left. Where do they think the ball is? And look at the assistant's response. The ball is currently in the basket as that is where it was when John and Mark were both away. Not bad, I would say. Okay, so now let's try out some of the multilingual capabilities. Now in this prompt, if you look here, it's there is a Arabic speaking tourist, Jamila, who is visiting traditional clothing store in Mara Marrakesh, Morocco. And then she is asking uh, the shopkeeper something in Arabic. And then shopkeeper is, who is familiar with all of this, um, re responding to Jamila. So what we are trying to do here, we are just trying to test out if model is aware of language, cultural nuances and differences. So I'm not sure if it's a multilingual model, but let's try it out. Oh, wow. Model understands Arabic. And it is saying based on cultural nuances and language difference, as a waiter, my response to Jamila in Arabic would be this. And then it, it has also translated it like, first, I would like to thank you for the beautiful collection that I would like to ask you to accompany me with the selection. As you may know, it is not possible to try all the options. Okay, that is a very diplomatic answer. 
Okay, and if you're Arabic speaking, please let me know if this Arabic is good enough. And then I have asked the model to write the detailed list of components and assembly instructions for a moon rocket. Let's see. Oh, wow. So you can build a moon rocket with this. It is talking about all the components here and then some of the assembly instructions. Nice. Okay, let's try out a math question. It is a bit of a, I would say, open-ended math question because it is related to the real numbers. So I'm just hoping that it is going to talk about some of the real numbers here. Wow. Yes, that is true. Either X or Y should be zero here in order to get the proper answer. Very nice. And let's try out a small coding question where I'm, uh, I am asking it to show me a Python script that draws a mental broad set. So let's see. It is taking a bit of a time for the coding question. That is interesting. Oh, very nice. So it has written the code. It has given us some of the preamble. Then the code is here. Looks good to me. It hasn't really imported uh, matplot1. Yeah, it doesn't look that good to me, but it's okay. So coding doesn't seem that good. Let's try one more encoding. In the next test, I'm ask asking you to translate the Python function into JavaScript. Yes, which looks good. So code translation looks good. Anyway, a good model, I would say. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are looking to train this model, you can go to their Hugging Face card and they have shared all the training scripts. So let me show you. So all you need to do is to use these commands to first get, uh, you know, clone the repo and all that stuff and then download the data set. You can use your own data sets. And then this is for supervised fine tuning. All you need to do is to run these commands. That's it. And then the same one for the other one, for the DPU, I mean. How good is that? So really good stuff. So they have open source everything from checkpoint to model to training and their scripts, which you can use as per your own use case. So really good stuff for AMD. I hope that they also do something about their GPU cards. And, you know, because we really badly need some competitor of NVIDIA to break the monopoly. That is good for everyone. That's it. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it helps a lot. Thank you.